Great relationships don't just happen, they're designed. But how do you get the love you really want when you haven't had the models and examples you needed? We've learned the hard way that talking about stuff can change everything, but it doesn't come naturally, and that's normal. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the ups and downs of creating a custom-built love. We'll get personal and talk about what's worked for us, hear from Jolie about what the research can teach us about love, and answer listener questions. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. Hi, we're going to talk about exploring potential kink today together so potential being i think uh, it's the, keyword the special the word the keyword there it's, it's about exploring because well things exploring, that might right be so a lot uh, of times the first thing that comes up for people is like exploring kinks together great when do i get my paddle right you know like move right to action versus finding out what you all want and where it overlaps and how you can make it the most fun and what's out there Right. So finding out what 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 are people doing these days? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's talk about exploring potential kinks yep. from my depth psychological perspective. I come at this like, well, what's what is a kink exactly? <laughs> okay. So we're defining terms right away. Is there Absolutely. well, is there such a thing as a kink? No. Is there such I don't a thing see how as it can be normal sex? No. <laughs> 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 right? Okay. You no, know, regular. Um, well, the number of um, cisgender dudes who have told me they just like regular sex, and I'm like, what does that mean to you? They don't mean like Please. weekly, do they? <laughs> I have asked that question. They don't generally get the joke. Um, no. Okay. What? Yeah. What is kink is best explored by establishing, first off, that this is going to be subjective. <laughs> it's also going to be um, very problematic if we start taking behaviors and saying that this is absolutely the edge. Like, here's the dividing line, because it's very othering to talk about kink versus whatever. I don't care what term you're going to talk about. If you, you can be derogatory in either direction. Yep. Right. Um, I've heard people use the term vanilla in a mm -hmm. very... Um, like happy way like oh i prefer vanilla sex and they're talking about like i prefer um things that don't push at the edges of my That's what boundaries I was yeah, push at the boundaries mine right? mine but then they're... i have had sex with some of those people who told me that they liked very vanilla sex i'm like oh they're fairly creative in a way that would lead me to have labeled some of those activities that they wanted to participate in as kink but here's where the fun is yes the the this kink vanilla line is subjective and it's about what you, what your idea of baseline is and then what you want to include in your day-to-day yep. -day and what you want to call kink. I think of kink as stuff that I don't want to unkink the hose. Mm -hmm. right. I like it that way. It's a little twisted and I like it that way. I'm enjoying it. So... If folks are imagining that I'm going to like provide a laundry list of things or a, a sharp dividing line, you couldn't. that's not going to happen. Yeah, couldn't do it. And it can create um, artificial boundaries that are really detrimental to the fact that you're in a relationship with another person who may have very different desires um, and might feel unable to share them if there's a lot of like othering and derogatory othering, language yeah. accidentally mm -hmm. group, used. Out group stuff. Yeah, and you might use that language without even really thinking about it because, um, yeah, because sometimes we're clumsy with our language mm -hmm. that way. So exploring potential kinks for me is a psychological thing. This is about dipping into what is out, outside of the stuff that I feel totally at home doing and feels very, like, Run of the mill, very comfortable. For I feel you. for me, mm -hmm. and not just that, but also isn't specifically in my because I can have gotten very comfortable with some of the stuff that are my kinks. 
Yeah. I can be very, very comfortable with it. Like I've, I've really, I've explored it fully and it feels fully um, incorporated into my conscious self. And I've still left it in the realm of kink, which means I allow it for me. It means I allow it to stay tinged with taboo, even mm-hmm. while accepting it deeply in myself. But that's through a lot of um, attention to what's going on in me. Um, exploring potential kinks is a place where we can explore the edges of what we're ready to bring into our conscious awareness. Um, but it it can also just be really fun conversations to have yeah. with your partner if you can create some psychological safety around how you have the conversation. Because Psychological the chances... safety, yeah. Yeah. Yep, because you are, by as, as I understand it, at least in what I'm talking about it, it's stuff that by its nature I'm a little tender yeah, about Yeah, trepidatious, sharing. maybe a little... I mean, yeah. I, I'm thinking people might judge me about it, and so... I want to be in a place where that where where I'm going to be met where I am. Yeah. And spoken to and dealt with. And so this goes in a lot of directions. Some people are worried that they will be judged as um, deviant or mm-hmm. or troubled or um, I've had people presume that I will take an approach that looks back at their childhood and and looks at like what they've suffered and therefore this is why they want this thing sexually like a pathological a patholo- approach a pathologizing mm-hmm. approach um which i do not take not at all though i think that we can learn about ourselves from looking back but that doesn't make it bad yeah, to my right. mind but we can also it can also go the other way some people are afraid that they'll be shamed for wanting things that are very gentle and mm-hmm. focused right. on things that are, are are less likely to fall into kinks but there are kinks that are very, very gentle. Absolutely. There are kinks that, um, you know, so kink is what you make of it and what you name it, right? Like this is very, very personal. I want everybody to feel empowered to claim your edge um, and understand that you get to grow and shift with it, but that the conversations we have establishing psychological safety for the conversation is where we can meet our partner and, um, yeah, play. Play at the edges of our imagination. So in the context like playing of... playing tag in the dark. A little dangerous, <laughs> a little but dangerous. really fun. Really fun and exciting. <laughs> so in the context of this conversation or conversations, um, how would you establish psychological safety? Okay, so one thing I would suggest is that Um, It's great to do some reflection on your own beforehand um, and not expect that all of this conversation is going to need to happen between the two of you Mm -hmm. um, because doing a little reflection on your own sexual desires, your own interest in exploring kink lets you start to develop a sense of self-intimacy, a sense of knowing yourself before you try to share it and that can just put you in a place to walk into the conversation with a little bit more groundedness Mm -hmm. um i i highly recommend that so you can establish some psychological safety for yourself on your own about how and what you're ready to there's the thing self-security is about you accepting yourself so even if you are met with um, judgment from a partner or Mm -hmm. a potential partner or a friend if you accept yourself, then that judgment can can be about them. Is it, tr- you know, that, that judgment mm-hmm. can ping off of you like, you know, rain off of a tent and it can go its merry way because you're, you've accepted this part of you. Um, another way that we can establish, establish psychological safety is by setting up a few ground rules and and just revisiting them before a conversation. For one thing, make sure that everybody wants to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes conversations about exploring kinks and things like that can come up spontaneously. Um, A place I've seen this happen a lot is on a long car trip. Yeah, Um, right. You know, you're on a long car trip. Everybody gets bored after a while. Maybe it's after dark and you're... And then a conversation happens and you don't really plan for it. But still, in those opening moments, you can say, hey, you know what? Let's just check in and remember that... We don't really know what we're going to find here. Yeah. And it's okay. 
This is a conversation. And I'm not, everything you say doesn't mean it's going to, it's your, your ultimate truth. Yeah. Um, uh, that's so there were a couple things that you just said that are very important to me personally which is that okay a conversation started and you said that partway into the conversation um, can be helpful to say hey we don't know where we're going so you can like have a meta conversation about the conversation yeah. and that's important to me because and it's never too late to step out and have that meta conversation and say right. like, oh let's let's just check in about where we are in this conversation and then drop back into it yeah and i think that i have felt like i needed permission to nah, it's not quite the right way to say it but um some internal completely internal nothing to do with you or even anybody i can imagine like remember um, I feel like I'm supposed to just figure out how to have the conversation in the conversation and that I don't get to back off and say, okay, hang on a minute. I think I need a minute to just make sure I'm in a good spot for this conversation. So hearing you say that is very helpful to me as just a reminder, because I know I can, but part of me is like, no, you got to keep, you got to push on. You got to push on. Spontaneous conversations just flow where they may. Which Here. by the way is just like having sex. Yeah, Where? so we're talking about ongoing consent. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, awesome. Uh, like, it, the whole notion is that we want to be acting in consensual ways, which means that it has to be okay to press pause on these conversations mm -hmm. or to say, I'm not ready to talk about that. Can we just call that off limits? I'm just, I'm not, I'm not ready to go down that path. Negotiating the conversation itself is practicing the skills of negotiating Ex exceptional sexual play. So that's something you, apparently you can do in the car in the dark. <laughs> I definitely I mean, don't wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we can also, we can set these up as formal conversations about exploring kinks. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say formal, I mean like we could plan to have one. And if you're planning to have one, then, you know, starting with a yes, no, maybe list can be a really fun way to explore what is out there stuff you might not have thought of right new ideas so you might have kinks that are known to you because they come up for you when you're masturbating there are fantasies that you've had since you were little they might be core erotic themes th that follow you mm -hmm. everywhere you might also realize that you have these fantasies that come from earlier relationships and you're still expanding and exploring them um you might have a whole bunch of established themes to your own mm -hmm. um, kinks. But the world is so grand. There's, there's <laughs> a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And so um, looking at lists of behaviors and play types and toys and ways that people explore the kink experience can be a great way to just start to, to expand your imagination of what's possible. Sometimes when I ask people about about kink, I'll ask for a baseline and they'll they'll say like, well, we tried tying each other up once. And that's kind of mm -hmm. it. Like they, their imagination just didn't stretch anywhere beyond that, which is fine, but they also didn't attempt to stretch it beyond there. And yeah. um, so now they're at, there's a lack of vocabulary available to them. So they've come to me and they actually actively want to talk about increasing the spice in their relationship but they don't know what the spices are. Like they know the word spice. <laughs> but they but don't they know don't what spices yet know are available. Oregano hmm. and marjoram. That's and a really good lunch. metaphor. Uh -huh. That's fine, but we need to get some vocabulary going. And let's be clear, um, what if you're gonna use the internet for this, you're gonna stumble on some stuff you might not want to see. So proceed with caution. Um, because you might not wanna click the images button. <laughs> It might not work for well, you. Well, and it, is, it's true. So is, it's again about um, safety, about, about keeping psychological yourself safety, right. psychologically safe. So a better choice might be to turn to a book where, um, especially a book that doesn't happen to have imagery in it, might be easier for you to introduce yourself to some of the basic concepts. Um, Tristan Taramino has a, a book called The Ultimate Guide to Kink. Um, Melina Williams Haas and uh, Lee Harrington have play well with other playing well with others. There are some great books out there that can introduce you to the, the basic concepts. And that can just be a nice place to start with having some language to begin talking about this. A thing that comes up 
fairly frequently for me with um, clients is the older they are, the less questions they think they're allowed to have about this. Like they should have already gotten there. And Aha. so, yes. and you definitely had this. Mm-hmm. Um, you ha- didn't have a sense of freedom to explore yep. um, in, in your, in your act, in your like action based sexual life. But you, you had, so you had the exposure to some pornographic imagery around it, but there were no books about it anywhere around you. There were no yep. explorations that way. So you lacked some vocabulary, even though you had images that you kind of wanted to act out, but they were hard for you to express to me. Mm-hmm. Because didn't you have had the to put words didn't to have it. have the yeah. narratives. Yeah. Challenging. Mm-hmm. So exposure can be helpful, but pornography is theater. So, so. So it's not as helpful as it might seem like it could be. Right. So it could be a starting spot, but I would recommend getting some actual vocabulary yeah. out of um, out of some resources that are designed for exactly that. And you you said something about um, so being thinking that. By by the so I'm here I am in my fifties and by now I should know like what the sex blah. is yeah what, I should know what, what sex, sex is. what all the sex is and there are a couple major fallacies in there and one of them is that there would ever be a time where you couldn't explore and find out more no yeah. matter how old you are it really does uh, that's a, like a huge fallacy that so if you're out there thinking oh I should already know this stuff no you shouldn't you can't you're not going to know all it's, of it it's yeah not to mention the fact that what if you just weren't it just wasn't where your focus was. And, yeah. It wasn't where your right? interest was. You get to um, change your mind. Yeah. Who you were before doesn't have to be who you yeah. are. And exploring this doesn't actually mean you want to do it either. So That's, another way to create established yes. psychological safety around these conversations is first things first, let's talk about talking about it. Then mm-hmm. let's talk about the actual stuff. Let's talk through the vocabulary and let's talk about what it sounds like and what sounds good or bad. But also let's talk about whether we're we're talking about fantasy or taking right. action on that fantasy things you bring into your fantasy life and then there's your individual life. fantasy life mm-hmm. and your shared fantasy life a common place people come to see me is they have an a rich inner fantasy life but they haven't yet figured out how to share that with their partner uh-huh. and this can be uh, Maybe, yeah, I think I'd go all the way to problematic because if they haven't figured out how to share this with their partner, often it's because they're actually caught in a shame story about their kink. Mm -hmm. And that shame story is actually a big limiter in their life in many ways um, and and can be used for for a lot of good. Um, Your kinks are sort of like the tea leaves of your soul. (laughs) You know, well, because they're (laughs) fantasy. There's a window into, yeah. Fantasy, like dreams, it's a window into your unconscious. Mm -hmm. So I take sexual fantasy very much the same way I take dreams. This is the same way I I read them, the same way I read dreams, which is to say, this is unconscious material. You may choose to bring some of it into your direct consciousness and work it and make it actively part of your conscious self. But some of it is unconscious material that comes up through you. And if you have ever been in the throes of um, passion, especially like near the tipping point of an orgasm, and you have had images rush in unbidden that are frightening, upsetting. Um, I have had certainly, I've had traumatic actual memories come up, but I've also had just imagery that I that's overwhelming to me in a way that I'm not really inviting, but it pushes through from the unconscious into my consciousness mm-hmm. in that moment. Um, I call that the orgasmic imagination. And I, I've written about it a little bit because I, I find that this is another way to get to know my unconscious material that takes a tender heart and a tender approach because it is right at your psychological edge. So I hear you describing something that you, know, you said it comes up unbidden. Do you find, and I don't know if the answer to this is yes or no, do you find that um, exploring kinks, which are can be another window into the unconscious, are they a way of exploring those things with a little more... Embodiedness. Embodiedness or... and, and control rather than unbidden. You're actually oh. inviting them in and... Yes, but and... I think they're different. They're okay. very different approaches. Okay. Like, So if I, I, I would... Here's the metaphor I would use. 
if I choose to um, open up a cookbook and choose a recipe from another culture and I go and I purchase all the ingredients and I read the story about it and then I learn how to make this dish and then I eat this dish, it's very different from walking through a new country and just and just being like having a, this dish appear in a, from a street vendor right in front of me and like, oh, wow. okay. whoa, what the heck is this? Wow. It might be really exciting. It might be really disgusting. I have no idea. Okay. It, it might freak me out. They're very different approaches. So I think they're both valuable. And I just want to invite us to, to give ourselves space to explore kinks in both of these ways. One is the material pushing forward from the unconscious. And that might be your personal unconscious or the collective unconscious. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the premise that I work on is that there is this collective unconscious, this these universal patterns of human behavior, some of them pretty darn ugly and, and painful and traumatic that exist. And this material can sort of push its way into our consciousness in image in particular. The, the, the unconscious doesn't, it doesn't really speak in words. Words can be the, used this way, but it doesn't speak in words. It speak. It uses image mm -hmm. to present to our imagination. Now we have this image that might be overwhelming to us. It might be too pungent, too yeah. um, too spicy. It might be too dangerous feeling. Um, I mean, if if somebody popped out of the woods and handed me a mushroom, I wouldn't just eat it. I don't know what that is. Yeah. An image okay. that just pops into my mm -hmm. psyche, I don't necessarily want to take into my sexual consciousness. Mm -hmm. But maybe I want to explore it and find out what it's got for me. Or maybe I find out, hell yes, I'm a full yes, and I'm going to munch that thing down right this second. <laughs> it, this is where it gets kind of messy because when we are exploring potential kinks, you might come across some stuff that causes tummy no-nos. Tummy no-nos. <laughs> they might be imagination no-nos in the in for you. Mm -hmm. For you, like they might bring you too close to an edge that is just whew, nope, you don't want to go there. But you might already have gotten there. And so now we gotta figure out how to get you back into a space of psychological safety. Mm -hmm. So this is where that prepared way of entering yeah. into fantasy can be really, really great. Preparing would look like, okay, what's our safe word? Right. What's our safe yep. word? We need a safe word in place, a word that means full on stop. Now, maybe it's just as simple as yellow and red. Yellow being caution. We need to slow down and t check in. Red being full stop. Everything stops and we, we halt all activity and we begin to re-engage in... Um, uh, non carried away dialogue. We need to start get, getting back to ourselves, not just dialogue, but selves. Yeah. And that's going to require aftercare. Aftercare sometimes happens during. Right. Aftercare. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't take that word and mean that it has to be after the completion of something. My aftercare plan, for instance, if I get swept into one of these overwhelming situations, a thing that I need is to be given some water or something to eat pretty quickly. I need grounding. I need to return to um, my body because I will, es my, my consciousness like escapes my body mm -hmm. at this point. And you can usually see this because I will go to a window. I'm not going to leap out of it or anything, but I'm like, it's like I feel myself missing. Okay. Going so, to find yourself. Yeah. And get yourself back. And I, this has taken a lot. I mean, this is, you know, 45 years of <laughs> I've been working on my, my sexual selfhood since I was, God, six or seven years old. So almost 40 years now. Um, it's taken a lot to be that conscious of that's what's going and so, on. And, and, and I need help the, to get and back. And that's not aftercare because the experience isn't over. It's not over for it's, me. Nope. That's, yep. This is actually help me come back to center. Another thing that can be helpful is simply having you put your hand right on my sternum and that mm -hmm. can, can help. But negotiating for these things beforehand, because for instance, if you were to wrap me up in a big hug, that wouldn't work for me. Yep. So we have to negotiate ahead of time some some strategies and in in some of these experiences can be overwhelming and it can be very difficult to say what have you, you ever need had in the moment yeah so have you ever had a safe word from your aftercare whoa because i have yes you have um because 
Right. I like a lot of aftercare and it's pretty active, which is great. Aftercare is a whole bunch of things. Okay, we're done exploring this particular kink in real life. We're, we're So there's been some completion. We've... Um, We've started to return to a sense of, you know, homeostasis, yep. who we are um, outside of that. And then I get sort of overwhelmed again, mm-hmm. even by the care being shown to me. And I need to sort of say for it again, there's like another layer of my consciousness is now peeling back. And yeah, it's complicated. So psychological safety requires... Uh, conversations and planning and thought and and knowing yourself and having multiple avenues back to safety. Multiple, right? Yep. Yeah. So, um, food and water works well for me. Um, a teddy bear works well for me. What works well for you? Um. So. I mean, I could hugs. tell you. Hugs. <laughs> um, I, I I haven't found a spot where I was too overwhelmed for for physical. Right. Uh, containment. Right. Uh, that's a big one for me. Which is physical containment and, and you're broad shouldered and stuff. So that can be a lot. So sometimes just being wrapped up in a blanket. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. There's, there's so many ways to plan also, for. Also teddy bear. Teddy bear and um, words of affirmation. Abs- oh yeah. Well, I'm always words, <laughs> on board for those. Words yeah. of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Right? And certain phrases in particular. You may have certain phrases that you'd really like to yep. have said to you. Yep. These are these are pieces that you put in place ahead of time. Yeah. And I actually encourage the conversations to have. Like, so right at the beginning, let's get a basic safety word, safe word in place so that even during the conversation about it, you can press the pause button. Right. Because as you said, <laughs> you, you can you can run into areas where it it brings um, uh, it brings up stuff for you and you want to step out. You want to step away or you know, pause. Right. So when you're exploring potential kinks, I think the big keys to remember are these are, these need to be consensual discussions, but every discussion that's at the edge, right? It's, it could cross over into tender or um, scary territory. Yeah. Yeah. So having a way to come back from that without having to run away from each other is really excellent. And yeah. another way, another thing that I find very important is to to what I think of as de-rolling, um, mm-hmm. but we could use another word for it. It's after this conversation has come to a close, like we're done with this part, saying, okay, thank you for having that conversation with me. And I'm going to return to my, my daytime consciousness. Yeah. And this isn't my day today. Um, you know, the, the, it's an exploration. There are some folks who work in this field, and they like they talk about this stuff all day, every day. Yeah. Even I don't talk about it all day, every day, because I have a a bigger set of work that incorporates this. But it's not the only thing. It's okay to to bring this conclu- to a conclusion and say, okay, we're going to return to, you know, lunch making, bill paying, yeah, going to work. Um, so you go out on this exploration, this adventure, and then you come home. Right, and that for for us, that looks like looking at each other and saying hi i'm back here with you um i care about you you are my partner you are um you are not a person who wants to do these things to me right now you're like i see you Uh and and reaffirm that i see you you're not asking me to take these actions or to leap off the the edge of a cliff into kink or to change the nature of our relationship yeah just because we explored this Mm mm-hmm and that's why I think these conversations wind up being layered because we're exploring. Um, I've noticed that clients often take the first three to six months of this kind of exploration can be really intense. Um, even if even if the conversations don't turn into action, it can feel really intense. But after a while, you get used to the fact that you have these kinds of conversations. Right. And it's not scary to they anymore become because you know that you can place. return to a sense yeah. of day-to-day normalcy. S- skill and experience with them, which that's what I was thinking about the um, safety uh, safety mechanisms you put in place. The more experience you have, the more you figure out what the best ones are for you. Right. So another great tool to use is some music. Change mm-hmm. the mood now. Put on some music that returns you to um, a, a more day-to-day consciousness. Yeah. Um, 
go go downstairs and cook something together or sh- like shift out of that energy you don't have to take action right away so exploring this is it's a big uh it's a big leap for a lot of folks and if it's a big leap for you remember that you get to you get to nibble at it you don't have to do it all at once uh your sex life is yours to explore your erotic fantasies are yours to explore you get to change your mind you get to change your mind you can explore something and say um nope yep and then later you could say let's explore it again you get to this is how it goes so this is a multifaceted um set of uh activities we're talking about and fantasies we're talking about and it's something that i would encourage you to think about as a we return to this over and over again Mm -hmm. rather than trying to just gobble it all up and make it all part of our life all at once definitely um which also makes it delicious this is something you're going to get to savor these conversations become part of how we make an erotic reality with our partners that is our unique fingerprint Mm -hmm. it becomes the pattern of this relationship i have other other patterns with other partners right this is ours yep and letting it unfold letting it unfold of its own uh, in its own natural course while also recognizing that i am in it and i get to row this boat i don't just have yep. to wait for the wind to blow me here and there yeah. um we both we get to do this together we get to co-create yeah. this um and then coming back to a spot and being grateful just that we had the conversation mm-hmm. and it is never too late to add a new dimension that's to right. your erotic life yeah. if you choose to okay well till next time keep talking to each other thanks so much for tuning in to this episode I've got one more thing I'd like to share with you and that you're just going to need to hop over to the website listen to jolie.com there you can grab my top five relationship guides for free right now Go get those guides. They're great. They're easy to implement conversations that will help you take action in creating the love you really want. It's my mission to make absolutely everything talk aboutable. She managed to help me be able to talk about stuff that I once couldn't even imagine saying out loud. Now I speak openly with my, my lovers, my friends, my family, and you um, on a podcast. Out loud relationship work really can change everything. That really is a wonder. One of my favorite things in the whole world. So when you're feeling the rough edges, when things aren't going the way that you'd hoped in your relationships, I want you to remember that relationships can be messy, and that's good news.